What if I told you that the man who discovered gravity spent most of his life trying to talk to God? Isaac Newton, the father of modern science, had a secret life, life filled with alchemy, divine codes, and forbidden experiments. A story that science books never told you. While the world saw him as a man of logic, Newton often locked himself away in a small, candlelit room surrounded by glass flasks. Strange powders in ancient manuscripts. At night, when the world slept, he searched for something beyond science. He believed that everything in the universe was alive, even metal had a soul. And if he could purify matter, he believed he could purify his own spirit. In his private notes, Newton wrote thousands of pages about alchemy, far more than he ever wrote about physics. He described strange symbols and visions. The green lion devours the sun, he wrote. A code for a mysterious substance that could dissolve gold. But his experiments were dangerous. He inhaled toxic mercury fumes, slowly poisoning himself. Some historians say the mercury made him unstable, perhaps even delusional. Yet Newton believed he was uncovering the language of God. To Newton, the universe was not chaos. It was designed a perfect mechanism built by a divine engineer. Every law of nature, every beam of light, was a piece of that sacred machine. He once wrote, This most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent and powerful being. Studying science, for him, was not an act of disbelief. It was an act of worship. But Newton's obsession went even deeper. He tried to calculate the end of the world. By combining biblical numbers and astronomical cycles, he concluded that the apocalypse would not happen before the year 2060. He didn't see it as destruction, but as a renewal, the moment when divine order would return to Earth. So who was Isaac Newton really? Was he the rational genius who gave us the laws of motion and gravity? Or was he the last great magician, a man who believed that knowledge could unlock eternity? Perhaps he was both, because to Newton, science and faith were not enemies. They were two languages describing the same truth. He wasn't trying to disprove God. He was trying to understand him. And maybe the real force that pulled Isaac Newton all his life wasn't gravity at all. It was the invisible pull of the divine, the gravity of God.